Ohio State football on the field, week 11 action, and we're getting into the thick of November here. You wrap up, Coach, uh, your time on the road here. There's only one left when we get back at home. Plenty of time to talk about that a little later, but you've seen just about everything this season, but I don't think we've seen a first half like that one against Northwestern. Well, I'm not sure we've seen a travel like the one we had. It was a little bit of a, a, a long travel, but I thought our kids handled it well and thought we came out of the gate. Uh, ready to go. You could feel as if the guys were focused in on what needed to be done, and, and uh, our defense created some havoc. Yeah, well, travel, kind of a harrowing experience. You didn't want the game to go that way, so after a, a rough Friday, like you said, of travel, you got things back to normal anyway, schedule-wise, so you're ready for the game on schedule. Sure were, and, and our fans were ready for the game. They showed up in mass, and yeah. there you see Vernon Golston putting some pressure on, and, and uh, our guys did a good job stripping. I think it was James Laurinaitis there that that caused the fumble and, and uh, came up with good field position for us. Yeah, Brandon Mitchell in there for the recovery. And then straight up top, you go spreading them out just a little bit. Anthony Gonzalez down the seam. Well, they were going to play extra guys in the box, so we thought we could hit the seams and, and uh, did a good job with that. And Antonio Pittman banging it up in there and we're moving the football. That you are, and this one goes through the air once again, and it's Brian Hartline, first career touchdown for Hartline. Yeah, I tell you what, the thing about Troy is Troy's going to go to the open guy. He doesn't care who it is, and, and uh, Brian was open. Here we are back on defense creating the turnover, and Antonio Smith coming up with the play. Yeah, Smith, that Thorpe candidate, that won't hurt that at all and puts you back on offense in good field position. Here you see Troy doing a good job with his footwork, finding the open guy there. It was Rory Nickel uh, on the crossing route, and and a good first down play. Then we spread him out a little bit and had the little pump draw there. And Antonio Pittman makes the big run, takes it down to the one. That he does on first and 10 from the 15, picks up 14. And then this one's going to get stopped up in the middle, but he's not done. No, he did a good job. He took it forward. Everyone pressed. And uh, Antonio does a good job of accelerating around the corner. Bounces it outside for a 14 nothing lead here. And we still have plenty of time left in the first quarter. They did a nice job with their screen game. Terrell Sutton, an outstanding back. Uh, you know, we were coming after him with pressure, and they came back with some screens and hurt us a little bit. It's always something they do is hit it underneath there in some of those plays, and then they're going to try some things. You know that. Well, a little end around after they got the first down, end around pass it was going to be. They saw that work for Illinois, and uh, we stopped that one pretty good. Then we continued to put pressure and make the sack there. and, and uh, Quinn Pitcock with the sack. Yeah, loss of two there, and you take back over, but uh, give it up and put Northwestern back on offense, and the guy's reading plays very well. Well, Brandon Mitchell is a smart football player, and he kind of baited him there a little bit, and he got into the end zone, and that was huge. Second career touchdown, big interception, 46 yards on the return, and it puts the Bucks up 21 to nothing. Well, they tried to come back and, and run the football a little bit, and they did a nice job there, but our guys keep hitting them. That's the thing about it. If they're going to get a first down, they're going to earn it. Yeah, Sutton pick up a 13 there. We move to second quarter action, and Joel Howells bangs a 29-yard field goal off a 12-play 69-yard drive. So you hold on D there. Yeah, that was a good drive they had, and then we came back, and, and a nice-looking play there as, as uh, Troy Smith finds Rory Nickel on the, on the counter pass. And he came back and found Brian Hartline up the seam again. And, uh, you know, Troy's doing a good job of seeing what's available. Here he finds Antonio Pittman, who just made the mistake of stretching the ball across the end zone. And, and uh, you know, you've you got to be happy with just keeping the ball. That's what's most important. We came back with the block punt. I think it was Larry Grant yeah. uh, who made the big play. And, and uh, turned that situation around and gave us great field position again. Well, it does because you made the most of your turnovers and made the most of special teams play as well, uh, seeing Hartline with his second career touchdown. Well, again, similar place, going up the seam, and Troy did a good job with his eyes and his feet and found the open receiver, and they did a nice job on this one, a little counter play with their tight end up the middle, and, and uh, Northwestern's always got some great scheme. Yeah, 27-3 to three is the score after that, and driving. Eight yards complete to Terrell Sutton. Maybe a little coverage breakdown over there in the flat, but they get in the end zone and make it 27-10. Well, they had a good scheme there. They was their fourth guy out to the side, and we really didn't have a guy for him. Then we came back uh, after, the, after the thing there and, and threw the pick, which probably shouldn't have called a long one against that win. We just couldn't get it out there. But uh, we keep causing those turnovers and keep making things happen. Well, you were in the two-minute drill there, and then you end up getting it back and, and close enough to take a shot, and this was just some kind of pass. I'll tell you what, he threw it out there, and, and uh, Teddy had great concentration. 
and it dropped right into his hands. And you're right, that was a wild first half. Yeah, 33 to 10 as you go to break there, and maybe the backbreaker uh, with that pass. When you score like that right before the half and put it up to, to that kind of lead, uh, that's going to be tough on a team, especially the way our defense is playing. But we still had to come out and get going right away in the second half. Of course, because of what happened last week. But, but so far, you get that offense jump-started. And I know Troy wanted to run the two-minute offense, and you're going into the wind saying, oh, well, let's see what we do here. Well, you know, he competitive guy, knows yeah. where his people are, and, and he knew that we either needed to be ours or nobody's, and uh, he did a good job taking them down. And the uh, defense, uh, just flying all over the field here in the first half, causing fumbles, uh, you know, opportunistic is what you look for, especially on the road. Well, they, we need them to just keep coming and keep hitting, and we're going to need to do that as we enter next week because, uh, you know, it'll be a battle. You know that uh, they're going to move the ball some, but we just have to keep banging it, and we have to take advantage of every opportunity. Turnovers are golden. One of the things you mentioned uh, early in the highlights about Northwestern, you know that they are going to crowd people into that box. And, you know, that's a dangerous thing for the receiving core that you have and the talent that you have at the skill positions. Those guys must love that. Well, you know, there were so many times that we had someone open in the seams. Mm -hmm. Right away the first play when Gonzo caught it, Brian Hartline's couple catches were seam routes. And, and if you're going to put an extra person in the box, there's going to be somewhere in the back that's not covered. And Troy did a good job finding it. Second half highlights straight ahead, an important second half to continue the message for the Bucks. We're back after this.